when Mortal Kombat 11 originally came out, I really enjoyed it, but it did have problems with its monetization. However, one very strong thing with the game was its story. As the game progressed, it went from an 8.7 to a 9, but the story really didn't need much added onto it. But we got one with Mortal Kombat 11 Aftermath, and I ain't complaining. Not only that, we got a story expansion with Aftermath, and we also have three new characters, Fujin, Shiva, and Robocop. So, we're gonna review all of them. We're gonna first review the story expansion, then we're gonna review the three characters separately. Anyways, let's get started. Today, I'm DPX, reviewing the Mortal Kombat 11 Aftermath expansion. Now, before we get started, you know what to do, though. Be sure to like this video, subscribe if you're new, turn on notifications, and leave a comment. You'll be a loyal subscriber. Why are we listening to this snake? Because I am a snake who's toiled beside Kronika, learning her secrets. I know them. Do you? The biggest part of the Mortal Kombat 11 Aftermath expansion is, well... Aftermath. In other words, part two to the story. While there were 12 chapters in the initial story, Aftermath bumps it up to 17 with the addition of five new chapters. They are centered around Nightwolf, Shiva, Fujin, a shared chapter between Sindel and Shao Kahn, and then Shang Tsung. I like this because of, with the exception of Shao Kahn, none of these characters were featured at all in the story. And even with Shao Kahn, wasn't featured too much. So it gives everyone more of the spotlight. Also, while he was already Shang Tsung in the game when the character came out, Kiri Hiroyuki Tagawa is just a perfect Shang Tsung as seen in the Mortal Kombat movie, and now we get to see more of him in the game with Aftermath. Pretty much what the story is, it picks up pretty much exactly where the initial story left off with Shang Tsung, Ujin, and Nightwolf now all confronting Raiden and Fire God Liu Kang about the fucked up timeline and Shang Tsung, to the surprise of everyone, allies with them and becomes good just for this. I'm not- I won't tell you what happens by the end of the story. I'm sure maybe you can figure it out, but it's very interesting, and like how I said at the beginning of the video, the story might have been the best part of MK11, so it's nice to see it getting even better. The great Kung Lao was a failure. He bravely fought for Earthrealm. And died brutally by Shokan hands. Along with the story, Mortal Kombat 11 Aftermath also brought three new characters. I mean, two of them were returning, one of them was new. We'll get into the others a bit later, but one of the three characters is Shiva, and I'm covering her first, probably because, well, I feel she is the least fun to play. Not to say I hate her in this game, but she just isn't really that fast, and some of her punches are so lame and so close range to the point where a couple times I hit the punch button and I thought that my fucking controller was broken because it's that fucking close range, if you know what I mean. And it's just like, why even use it? But Shiva is still a pretty fun character to use. Like, she's not my least favorite character in the game, for sure. Her chapter in the story was really fun. Her classic tower was really cool. I, as, like, her latter ending, they all have the same towers. And just playing as her is pretty fun. She's just my least favorite because she is the least fun out of the three. And there really isn't much else to say about her. Abandon me. How many mortals will die before this ends? As many as it takes. Next up is Fujin, and let me tell you, when it comes to actually playing as the character, 
Fujin might actually be my favorite since he may be the most fun out of the three. Being a wind god and also brother to Raiden, Fujin's wind abilities make him a very fun and quick character to play. His chapter in the story might also be one of my favorite chapters in the story. It's also very easy to combo with him because of his mobility and how quick he is. Did I mention his wind? I mean, his wind is also just, it just helps a lot. Also, why does he have a gun though? He's, he's a wind god. Also, his friendship may possibly be one of the best with is the kite and the wind. I said wind a lot, didn't I? Fujin is definitely a very fun character to play as. Haven't we done this before? I have no record of a previous encounter. We have met, I am sure. Of it. Last but not least is Robocop. I might have said Fujin is my favorite out of the three to play as, but Robocop is the one with the coolest inclusion by far. His intro cutscenes, his voice actor who happens to be Peter Weller who played the titular character in the 1987 movie, his multitude of customization options, and the fact that you can do Robocop vs Terminator in a Mortal Kombat game are just awesome. As for playing as him, he sorta is a little similar to Terminator in terms of mobility, which I had a lot of problems with Terminator, and in my opinion, he's just a little too slow. I get Robocop is a robot, and he moves pretty robotically in this game, so I guess it's staying true to the character, but it's a little annoying, but he is actually a lot quicker than he may seem and especially quicker than Terminator, making him, in my opinion, better in this game. Also, nice callback to the comics where Terminator and Robocop crossed over. Haven't we done this before? I have no record of a previous encounter. We have met, I am sure. Of it. We can change the outcome of the fight against Kronika. We can defeat her and fix time. I had never thought you gullible, brother. Shang Tsung's schemes serve only to benefit him. In conclusion, Mortal Kombat 11 Aftermath is a sick expansion. One that I didn't know I wanted, and I don't mean like I was indifferent about it when it was announced. I mean like, before it was announced, I didn't even think that we can add on to the story, and then this was announced, I'm like, oh fuck yeah, I want this. Not to mention the three added characters, and the friendships, and the skins, which I didn't talk about because there's not a whole lot to say about them, but they're just great that they're in. Also, by the way, the friendships are free. You don't need to buy this expansion if you want the friendships. But they're all great inclusions, and I'm, I'm happy about just about everything. Of course, it loses points just because Shiva's not the most fun, and... Robocop isn't the most fun, but the, how well Robocop was integrated into the game saves it, and Shiva is still fun. So, in the end, I give Mortal Kombat 11 Aftermath a 9.5 out of 10. Hey, if you, if you are enjoying this game, enjoyed Mortal Kombat 11 already, get this. $40 seems a lot, seems pricey, and yes, it is a bit steep, but you got some good ass content coming your way and if you don't have the game already get the $60 collection thingy and yeah anyways that'll be it for this video uh Mortal Kombat 11 Aftermath did you get it let me know in the comments below be sure to like this video come subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one bye bye